of their salary to disavow the two funds. Half of Europe to be infected with Omicron in the next eight weeks. Barashi, Listeners and welcome to Usawa News at noon. Today is Wednesday, 9th Jumadatani, 1443, after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is equivalent to 12th January 2022. I am Umu Salma Adam Iko with the news in Paul. President Muhammad Buhari has felicitated with the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Muhammad on her appointment for a second term. In a congratulatory message by his media aide Femi Adishina yesterday in Abuja, the president assured Amina Muhammad of the prayers and support of Nigerians, especially the Federal Executive Council, where she served for some years. The president expressed deepest appreciation to United Secretary General Antonio Guterres for the confidence reinforced on the former Minister of Environment giving her another opportunity to serve the global body and humanity, which further enhances the voice and presence of Nigeria. The news agency of Nigeria, NAN, reported that in June 2021, the Secretary General Antonio Guterres asked Amina Muhammad to serve as Deputy Secretary General for a second term. Before her appointment in 2017, she was Nigeria's Minister of Environment under President Muhammad Buhari. The rest to clinch old progressive Congress presidential ticket for 2023 became more competitive yesterday after a Wenyi State Governor Dev Umahi and Senator Oji Kalu publicly declared their ambitions. Their declaration came barely 24 hours after EFC Chitin and former Lagos State Governor Bola Ahmed Sinibu indicated his interest to become Nigeria's next president. Declared his intention as a state, at a state house press briefing after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari. Umahi said his presidency would replicate his progressive efforts to Ebony at the national level. His declaration, Senator Kalu, in his declaration, Senator Kalu said while he was nothing against the aspiration of Mr. Tinubu, he believes that the South East is right for the presidency and that should be turned up the region to produce the next president. According to them, President Buhari responded to his interest by asking, asking him to seek the support of the people. The United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, has condemned the recent attack that claimed the life of scores of presidents in Zampara State. In a statement yesterday by his spokesman, Stephanie Jujari, he condoled with the families whose loved ones were lost to the attack. He also called for the arrest and prosecution of the assailants and assured the Nigerian government of the UN support in the fight against terrorists and other criminals. News agency of Nigeria has reported that scores of locals were killed in recent attacks by bandits in two local government areas of Zampara State. No fewer than four villages were arrested in the attack that lasted about 48 hours in Anka and Bukrin local government. President Muhammad Buhari had also condemned the attack in a statement by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Gardashihu. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources yesterday reinforced coordination from all partners to prevent cholera deaths. The ministry was reacting to over 3,598 deaths recorded in 2021 across the country. The data shifted from cholera situation report from 2021 revealed that the age group of 5 to 14 years were the most affected, with Bauchi, Jigawa, Kanu, Zamfara State leading. This was discussed at the National Water Sanitation and Hygiene in Emergency Group meeting in Abuja with participation from the line ministries and development partners. The Director of Water Quality Control and Sanitation in the Ministry, Mr. Emmanuel Awe, said it was worrisome that cholera does still occurred in many parts of the country. He said the meeting was an avenue to brainstorm on ways to see that cholera cases were brought to the BRS minimum in 2022 through coordination collaboration.
The Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, said yesterday eight more people have died of complications related to COVID-19. The agency disclosed this on its Facebook page yesterday while giving an update on the management of disease in the country. It added that 420 more infections were confirmed yesterday from 12 states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. Lagos topped the state reporting more cases with 103 infections and was followed by Kwara and Afa Igom with low 90 and 49 additional cases respectively. Other states include FCT with its 39 cases, Kanu with 33, Rivers with 31, Cross River with 17, Ogun with 17 cases, Kaduna with 15 cases, Edo with 11 cases, Niger with 9 cases, Oyo 5 cases, and Abia 1 case. Since Nigeria reported its first case of disease in February 2022, the nation has confirmed a total of 248,732 infections. 219,479 people who initially tested positive have been discharged, and the nation's death toll from the disease has risen to 3,085. The news is coming to you from the studio show of radio. One news after the short break. Stay tuned. Henceforth, each of the 27 Digao local government chairmen and their vice are to contribute 5,000 and 2,000 respectively from their salaries every month to the Disability Trust Fund. While each of the local government speakers and secretaries are, co are to contribute 100,000 monthly, councillors as, well as, as well as supervisory councillors and local government advisors will contribute 500 naira each directly from their salaries. This was according to the release signed and made available to linchmen in duty by the chairman of the Gao State Social Protection Platform, GSOP, Comrade Choi Bumusa Kafingana. He also explained that the local government chairman are to work together with the rehabilitation board to watch replacement of the beneficiaries of the social security, security scheme for people living with disability that die, support poor and vulnerable across the local government areas. The platform has, among others, facilitated awareness, creation on disability law and launching of the disability fund, social protection policy, and social protection implementation framework. The Gao State Islamic Education Bureau has spent over 600 million naira on the execution of project last year. The executive secretary of the board, Dr. Abu Bakr Sainabul Nukudu, stated this while answering questions from the newsmen. Dr. Abu Bakr Sani says some of the projects include construction of classroom at Government Arabic Secondary School in Majia, Kaugama, Aujara, and Sokwawa. He added that others include the renovation exercise of Arabic Secondary School Sara, Katanga, Jahun, Kualam, Lanzumu, and Amin Yusuf School in Hadija. The executive secretary urged parents and teachers to support government effort in providing qualitative education to the pre present and future generations. He also commended the Gao State Government for maximum support and cooperation to the Bureau in boost boosting Islamic education in the state. The Chairman of All Progressive Congress APC Caretaker Committee, Yobe State Governor Maimala Bumi, has warned against sabotaging the reconciliation in Gombe State chapter of the party. He said in a statement by his leader, Edmomo Muhammad, that he never directed any review of Gombe APC Congress. Bumi said the report on the alleged review was a baseless speculation and a figment of the author's imagination. The caretaker chairman urged supporters of Governor Inua and Senator Goji to support the peace, reconciliation, and brotherhood among the stakeholders. He said the party would continue to build true reconciliation and harmonize all differences to promote unity in the party. Now to international scene. The World Health Organization has warned that half of Europe will have coughed the Omicron variant within the next six to eight weeks. World Health Organization Regional Director for Europe, Dr. Hans Lodge, met this non-tunisman yesterday and said 
a west to east tidal wave of Omicron was sweeping across the region on top of a surge in the Delta variant. The projection was based on the 7 million new cases reported across Europe in the first week of 2022. The number of, of infections has more than doubled in a two-week period. Recent studies suggest the Omicron is less likely to make people seriously ill than previous COVID variants. But Omicron is still highly contagious and can infect people even if they are fully vaccinated. The record number of people catching it has left health system under a severe strain. And that has been the end of the news. But before I go, a recap of the news the incidents. <laughs> From the news we all had, President Muhammad Buhari held Amina Muhammad for her appointment as United Nations Deputy Secretary General. We also had Jigawa local government chairman to contribute part of their salary to the stability fund. From the international scene, half of Europe to be infected with Omicron in the next eight weeks. That has been the end of the news on behalf of the news department, headed by Salama Tumuhu Eliman, our editor, Muhammad Suleiman Nubi. I am Umsan Ma'adami Ikosain. Have a great day.